Hello and welcome to today's video. If you're new here, my name's Emma. I'm an illustrator based in Sheffield and these are my daily-ish vlogs. And if you're wondering, this is my lovely boy, Roly. So today I'm going to do a studio vlog video montage with a voiceover, answering some of your questions, some of the things that I often get asked in the YouTube comments. So let's go. One question that I get asked frequently, and it's probably the one that I get asked the most is why do I use coloured pencils instead of graphite in my sketchbooks? Um, and the question is just personal preference now, but I did used to use graphite back in the day and then there was a long time when I didn't actually sketch in my sketchbooks at all. I had quite a bad relationship with sketchbooks. The sketching process would kind of lead me down a negative, negative mindset. It would kind of lead to a lot of negative self-talk and I didn't really I don't know, I didn't really understand how to sketch. I've talked about this in another video, so I won't go too much into it, but I used to feel like, I don't know, I used to feel the pressure of social media, like everything in my sketchbooks got to be so perfect. And because of that, I didn't really get good vibes from my sketchbook. So it was only in 2023 that I really started sketching properly and I feel really that I've got an idea of what a sketchbook is for and this was all helped by uh, an audio guide from the Good Ship Illustration which is free to access you can still access it on their website um, and it's called the Sketchbooker's Friend and it's a little walkthrough on time sketching and when I started this I only I, I think I only had some coloured pencils to hand so I thought well it's a 30 second drawing I'll just use this pencil that is on my desk and it was a coloured pencil and it just it just stuck since then I've been using coloured pencils and actually I like I like it for um, being one step closer to adding colour in my sketchbook because I don't know about you guys but I've always found or when I very first started sketching especially I found it difficult to bridge between pencil drawings and then how do you add colour? How do you add different paints and mediums and stuff? Does that sit well with the graphite that I'm using? So drawing in colour to start with, it's, it's one step closer to being confident adding colour and adding pencils and adding different coloured medium into my sketchbooks. If that makes sense. I think I might have just gone off on a bit of a tangent there. But I like, basically, I, I like using coloured pencils because it's one step closer to you know, adding finished media into my sketchbooks. Not that I ever really do. Uh, and I don't know, I just like the range of shading and, oh, another reason is that it doesn't smudge as much. Uh, graphite really smudges and you'll always end up with, or you usually end up with um, like a graphite smudge on your hand. Uh, coloured pencils, I haven't found they do that. So that's, that's why, that's why I use it. There's another question that I have been asked in my YouTube comments and for the life of me, I can't find, <laughs> I can't find the person who asked it now, but they asked about how I, how I practice drawing emotions in my sketchbook. And oh, it's tricky. Aside from saying just draw lots and practice, which sounds really glib, but it's kind of like mainly what's happened. I just draw a lot and I look a lot at people when I'm drawing them. I think it helps that um, in one of my jobs I get I get access to, there's basically a cafe outside and when it's quiet I can draw those people and I can draw those people without the pressure of them knowing that I'm drawing them. So I can really stare, I can really look at people without feeling like a weirdo. Uh, so that helps me. Um, but aside from that, try practicing in a mirror. I remember doing a Good Ship Illustration art club. Now, if you don't know what these are, uh, they are uh, Instagram, Instagram lives. They do them every now and then, but they've recorded them as well. And one of the sessions was an upside down mirror drawing where you draw, draw your reflection, but upside down on the paper as though it's kind of like fallen onto the paper out of the mirror, if you know what I mean. Uh, you might not know what I mean. It's quite a strange concept, but that was the first art club that I ever did. And that was basically pulling lots of faces in a mirror, drawing it upside down. But it it really focused my attention on looking at at the face. So that's a really good way to, to practice emotions. If you're drawing a character, 
Um, or you just want to practice before you go out into the real world so you've already got the muscle memory of how to draw a person concentrating or how to draw a person laughing and smiling and you know looking up looking down you can practice quick sketches of yourself in a mirror and just practice them in your sketchbook and then once you've done that when you're out and about you will be one step closer to knowing kind of how to translate that emotion onto the paper if that helps so sorry that I couldn't find the name of the person who asked that question I literally before I started recording this audio I found it then went back into the YouTube comments and I couldn't find you so I'm really sorry but thanks for asking the question I did appreciate that and someone's recently asked me what I use to film these videos uh just my phone <laughs> nothing special I don't have any special equipment to stop to stop the camera wobbling or anything like that uh, occasionally I'll use a tripod you can see on the left hand side here I've got a, a mic stand with a phone adapter on it so it can hold my phone uh, and that's it I use a tripod and the camera on my phone you don't really need a lot to be filming YouTube videos to be honest um, so yeah I don't know if that's interesting to you but that's the answer I've recently also been chatting to people uh, after one of my recent videos about the Shirley Hughes Award that I'm taking part in. And I think some interesting things have come up in conversations with those few people. Um, uh, while I love the idea of this sketchbook competition and it's uh, a celebration, I suppose, of sketchbooks, I do worry... And I felt it in myself as well. But I do worry that there will be a um, a pressure, maybe, amongst people. I felt it. Uh, to change how you normally sketch to fit in with what they're looking for. And I know in my last video, I was reading through their criteria to try and find out the kind of thing they were looking for. So I was... I was reading their descriptions and I was repeating, you know, whatever it was, like character, vitality, you know, <laughs> whatever the words were. Um, I just want to make clear that personally, I don't think you should be changing your sketches in order to win a competition or in order to be considered for a competition. I think really what they're looking for is... is observational drawing from life that isn't a finished illustration and they can't say there's a right or wrong way to do that so basically they've just said something that's filled with life something that's filled with movement something that's filled with energy and and something that has been drawn from life there is no right or wrong way to sketchbook um i was only going through what they were looking for for that competition in order to help me narrow down what i'd already drawn uh, and since hearing about this competition, I have had to have a word with myself a couple of times because I've been really, so, I've occasionally been on the verge of changing how I draw or drawing something different or spending more time on something and trying to noodle over something because of the pressure maybe to draw something a bit, in inverted commas, better or in a different way to how I normally do. And I've had to have a word with myself a couple of times um at the end of the day sketchbooks are for you uh they're, they're not wanting something that's engineered they've already said that they don't want a finished piece and that's basically saying they don't want something that you've you've engineered for this competition so if you were curious about this competition i would 100 percent encourage you to take part in it because it's free to enter and you stand the chance of winning a thousand pounds but i would i would proceed with caution don't let anyone else's perceived expectations of what you think they think a sketchbook should be change how you actually draw. Because at the end of the day, a sketchbook is for you and you alone to get practice in observing the world around you and translating that into a drawing. So basically, just stay true to your own course 
and if if your sketches are what they're looking for brilliant you've won and if your sketches aren't what they're looking for I mean you're still a winner because you're sketching and you're interpreting the world around you and you're translating it into pencil lines and marks I mean what's What's not to like? It's a win-win situation. But basically, I would encourage you to stay true to uh, to your sketchbooks being yours and no one else's. So this is where I'm going to leave this video. Thank you very much for listening. If you got this far, give yourself a pat on the back because it's it's potentially been a bit of a journey. So I'm going to leave this video here and I will hopefully catch you in the next one. So until then, bye.